so hi everyone today we will be discussing about uh, neural image assessment aka nema uh, which is a uh, uh, deep learning architecture introduced by google uh, for scoring out images now from uh, on a scale of 0 to 10 now this can be continuous numbers as you can see in the image some of the images are given 6.3 some is given 3.5 etc uh, so how are these images uh, the score is calculated it is based on two aspects of the image that is uh, the quali the quality of the image that is whether the image is blurry or not uh, or whether it is pixelated at certain points etc and the aesthetics of the image how many colors are used what are different shape present what are different textures present etc so let's first of all understand the very core of uh, NEMA that is transfer learning on which the entire idea of NEMA is based out of so what does uh, what does transfer learning mean and how it is used in NEMA so in transfer learning what we do is that we train out a huge humongous uh, deep learning architecture over some generalized data set and eventually depending upon the requirement we will be adding a few layers on the top of this giant architecture that we have already pre-trained and then uh, we will be fine tuning this model on our particular data set now so uh, what, uh, it is it comprises of two step one is that we we take up a pre-trained model on some generalized data set then eventually for our specific task uh, we would be adding a few layers on the top of this architecture and training only those layers by freezing out uh, the below architecture that is already pre-trained so uh, the two way it can go is that even we can also unfreeze the model uh, the giant architecture uh, and can fine tune the weights of that model as well or we can completely freeze out the architecture that uh, that is pre-trained and the layers that we are adding on the top of it should only be trained this is the whole idea of transfer learning now moving back to NEMA uh, what uh, how does it use transfer learning so basically NEMA as a giant architecture either uses image net or rest net or mobile net and on the top of it it adds a fully connected layer uh, for classifying uh, with uh, for 10 class multi classification problem so as the score is from 0 to 9 we'll be uh, having uh, 10 classes in it so they are not taking it as a regression problem but more of a classification problem so uh, uh, to summarize basically it takes a image net and then applies a fully connected layer for uh, for 10 class multi classification and then calculate the probability for each of the class and that's it so final score that we get for an image is probability of 0 into 0 probability of 1 into 1 probability of 2 into 2 probability of 3 into 3 etc and summing all of them uh, so given an image uh, first of all it is passed with that giant architecture that is image net or resnet and then uh, the, the above fully connected layer uh, uh, is added on the top of the layer uh, on this on the top of this giant architecture which gives out probability for scores from 0 to 9 uh, that is 10 probabilities and to calculate the final score what we are doing is that we are uh, multiplying the probability into that particular score so the probability of 0 into 0 probability of 1 into 1 probability of 2 into 2 and whatever we get after a summation is our final score the loss function being optimized in NEMA is earth movers distance so it is something that many of you have might, might not have heard of so let's take an example consider this particular image where uh, this yellow region is Switzerland this green region is India now what we wish to do is that we wish to calculate the distance between uh, the two countries now if you notice uh, you might have uh, calculated distance between two points but how to calculate the distance between two regions so basically this is what earth moves distance helps us to do uh, so uh, it is a minimum cost uh, to move all the mass from one distribution assume that from India to other distribution that is Switzerland this gives us a distance between the two uh, regions that we have so to calculate the distance between two regions what we're trying to calculate is the minimum cost required to move all the mass from uh, this particular area to this particular area uh, how is it uh, getting used in case of uh, NEMA and why are we using earth movers distance so these are two questions that we need to answer the first question being uh, why it is getting used in NEMA because uh, if you notice we have considered this particular problem as a classification problem which can be a regression problem as well because uh, the classes are the scores are continuous number from 0 to 9 but eventually you are uh, taking a classification problem and as it is ordinal in nature so if you take it as a classification problem it can be a big problem because uh, assume that a class uh, has a score of 9 which gets an uh, image has a score of 9 which gets a score 2 and this, uh, and then the image has a score of 10 which gets a score of 9 so eventually in the two cases the first case is a big big miss as compared to the second one but in case of classification if you go with the usual 
classification matrix we won't be able to achieve, uh, know that ki the model was very poor in the first case as compared to the second case because uh, 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 in the earlier case where it has to give a 9 it is giving a 2 a difference of 7 while in the second case in a, in a uh, where it need to give a score of 10 it is giving a score of 9 where the difference is 1 so in this case the model should be less penalized in the second case as compared to the first case so that is why we are using earth movers distance the formula for earth mover distance is p upon p hat so p is the original dis uh, original distribution and p hat is the calculated distribution uh, probability distribution that we get from the, pre the predictions that we get from the model uh, equals to 1 upon n summation k equals to 1 to n n is the total number of classes so in our case it is 10 cdf uh, k minus cdf p hat k it's pretty easy uh, mod r whole 1 upon r so let's understand it so cdf is basic cumulative uh, distribution function it's a cumulative score that we are adding up k goes from 1 to n so when k is 1 when k is 1 so we will be going for cdf 0 cdf 1 the summation of the two pro uh, name the probability of the uh, the summation of the two probabilities if k is equals to 5 so the cdf score becomes probability of 0 probability of 1 probability of 2 probability of 3 probability of 4 probability of 5 probability of uh, and adding all of them so cumulative means that so all the previous probabilities will also get added up till uh, 5 and r is a factor that is taken as equals to 2 in this case uh, so and p is the original distribution p hat is the calculated distribution so i guess the uh, formula is pretty obvious to us now the major issue with nema is that uh, key it require it is more of a supervised learning method you need to have some label data so labeling images is a big big challenge and if you don't have these labels uh, you might be in some sort of a trouble to get your scores so in case of google uh, when i was reading this case study uh, they use uh, nearly 200 professional photographers to average uh, to label out images this is this costly uh, so uh, one of the problems that i was working on uh, uh, we also tried out this uh, pre-trained nema and there were a few issues that i figured out uh, one is that aesthetic quality was given more more Im uh, more importance as compared to the technical quality so if an image is blurred but has a lot of aesthetics in it it was getting a higher ratings uh, irrespective of whatever the quality of the image is more the color and the variety more is the score so aesthetics was uh, pretty dominant in the performance and what i saw uh, so uh, summing it up uh, nema can be used uh, nema can be used to give a score from 0 to 9 or 0 to 19 and 0 to 5 depending upon you you can change the fully connected layer as we talked about earlier uh, it, it has some flaws like in the real world problem but eventually uh, given depending upon the explanation given by in google's uh, blog it appears to be pretty perfect and can be a great helpful tool to deciding um, which filters to use over the image which image is looking more aesthetic uh, aesthetically appealing as compared to others and it can also have real world uh, solutions as well so like in case of uh, in our case we were working with prescription images where we are trying to segregate very poor quality images and provide them for manual labeling so this was pretty helpful and eventually it is something that i would suggest you to try out